My friend, you and I both know that the state of mental health in this world is very worrying. I have the privilege of working with a lot of young people and over my years of doing um, this type of work, I've seen like the state of mental health, especially in young people, deteriorate significantly over the years. And so it got me thinking, right? What can we do? Like, what are some things that we can implement in our lives that can make a massive difference to our mental health? That could both prevent it, but also help us too. And like, not just simple things, but simple and easy things to implement. Now, whether you are an adult or whether you are a teenager or like just young person, like I have no doubt that if you were to implement at least one of these things, it can make a huge difference to your productivity, your performance at work, your performance at school, right? The quality of your relationships and just how connected you feel with yourself and with other people in your life. And I suppose more importantly, like just how happy are you, right? How can we do things that can increase our overall happiness, resilience, satisfaction and fulfillment in life so that the bad times aren't so bad? so that the stressful times aren't so stressful, or better yet, so that we can deal with the sad, stressful, anxious, and worrying times. And so that's all I wanna share with you in this video. And so let's go, let's kick this thing off. Number one, adopt an upright posture. Our posture can directly affect how we feel. There's this really interesting piece of research uh, that has basically dived into um, posture and like there's more research that's being published and whatnot but this in this particular piece of research they took people with depressive symptoms so they're not clinically depressed like not diagnosed or anything but they have like depressive symptoms and it was found that if you were to adopt like an upright posture you have a better chance at like experiencing positive affect which is things like joy alertness and like interest and it would also reduce things like fatigue and self-focus. So the, this this focus on yourself, like, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Like that focus just ends up getting reduced a lot more if you were to just adopt an upright posture. Like it's a really simple thing, right? And it, all it takes is for you to just, you know, roll your shoulders back a little bit, raise your head slightly and just align your spine. That's all it is. If you were to just do that while you're seated and while you're walking, like think about how you're sitting right now. Or well, how are you standing right now? Like, are you hunched over your phone or your laptop? Like, it's just a simple change, right? That can make a massive difference. Now, number two, make time to connect with family and friends. The purpose of this is so you can build empathetic relationships. Now, this is especially helpful for young people. I personally think one great way to do this, when you feel safe and, you know, when, when you feel like you have the courage to do so and you trust this person, is to let that family member or that friend know how you're actually going. And I know it's tough, like it's not an easy thing to let someone inside and let them see some difficult parts of yourself. I know it's hard to do that. And I remember when I was a lot younger, I used to keep things bottled up. I never used to tell my friends because if I did, then they're gonna judge me. I'm quite ashamed of how I feel. And like, I don't wanna burden them with my problems. Like I know it's very easy to think like that. And I think the mind tends to go in that direction. But then I thought about it and I've been thinking about it recently. I'm like, hang on, I'd rather my friend tell me how they're actually going just so I know, cause I care. And I have a feeling you'd also feel the same about your friends. Like I'm, sh I'm assuming you'd wanna know how they're going as well, rather than like them keep it to themselves and just bottle it up and not share it with you. Like when someone has shared things with me, I've never felt burdened by their problems. I just, like if I didn't feel like I was ready to kind of hear that sort of stuff, or if I wasn't in the right mental space to hear it, I'd always make sure that those conversations were either were put at a, to a better time, or if I knew it was gonna be really heavy, that I'd direct them to the right person. But for the most part, I never really felt burdened. Um, by anything that anyone shared because I knew like their experiences and their feelings that they're, like they're their feelings like I can empathize with them and feel feel it while they're sharing it with me but I don't have to hold on to it and take it as my own like there's a whole thing around you know self practices and everything that you can utilize to make sure that you're washing off that energy and whatnot but that's obviously a whole different video but I think it's it's super important that you know you get things off your chest and you'd be surprised that once you do that, just how like, just how much more space you feel you have in your body and in your mind to be more productive, to start doing things, to feel happier. Like if, you're, like if your cup is filled with all this 
pressure, sadness, right? To then have like happiness come along and like, you know, pour a little bit of like goodness inside of it, man, there's no space for that. But when you can like talk about things and kind of just take it out of this little jar that you have inside of you, it's gonna allow space for all those other nice things to kind of like get in there. I hope that analogy kind of makes sense, but I think that's kind of what makes sense to me in, in my mind and the way I, that I like to use, I like to look at it. So yeah, although it might be hard, like make that time to connect with people and share how you're actually going. Just as a suggestion. Also, by the way, if you are unsure how to support your friends when they're opening up to you, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'll make another video on how you can actually support a friend if they're opening up to you, what to do, what not to do. So please make sure if you wanna be there for that, you subscribe to the channel. The next thing, number three, sunlight. I honestly think that humans, we are just complicated plants. That's all it is. Just like how plants photosynthesize, we also need to photosynthesize. The simple act of getting outside and letting the sunlight hit your skin and the cones and the rods in your eyes can make such a huge difference to your mental health. A 2016 study on 466 employees found that sunlight exposure can help reduce feelings of depression and anxiety. So whether you are working or studying, just get outside. Like, like I said, simple, easy things. Just move, get outside. Number four, practice positive thinking. Negative thoughts lead to negative states of mind. This makes us unhappy. And one great way to change this is to just re-script your thinking and change how you view things. If you are unsuccessful at a job interview, instead of beating yourself up and saying things like, I'm not good enough. There's no way I'm ever gonna get a job. I can't ever get a job. No one's going to hire me. Instead of saying things like that, right? To be compassionate and say, you know, I'll keep trying, I'll upskill. All it's doing is just reducing the personalization of the event because something like failure, failure is not a person, right? Failure is just something that happens, just like success. Plus, if you're gonna accept the successes, then you have to also accept the failures. So it's about just recognizing that failure and success, ups and downs is just a normal part of life and recognize that both of them are going to be present. Both of them will be there. If you do a test and you get a bad mark, be understanding. I will learn from this. And next time, I'll try harder. By simply changing our perspective, we can be a lot more positive about certain difficulties and challenges in life that we experience. And number five is gratitude. Sitting in upright position, recall things that you are grateful for and write a list. Don't type a list, write a list. And why sitting up straight? This brings it back to the first point. It's because it's gonna give you a better chance at recalling the positive things. When you're slouched and, and you're like kind of in a not so um, like physically positive looking like body posture, your ability to actually recall positive things is not great at all. Whereas if you're sitting up nice and straight, your ability to recall positive memories, positive experiences, things that you're really grateful for is a lot better. So when you do your gratitude journal, when you do your gratitude list at whatever time of the day, right? Sit up nice and straight with a smile on your face and recall the positive things in your life. It can be anything, it can be big, it can be small. My personal favorite when I used to do this very consistently, I now do it like occasionally, I don't do it too often, but I do it very occasionally, like I'd say two or three times a week. At the end of the day, like when I'm in bed, right? I like to just sit cross-legged and just write like three things that I'm grateful for and why I'm grateful for them. And what's really interesting is, is when you when you go to bed, right? You, like you go to bed happy. And I found that when you go to bed happy, you wake up happy. Like it's like, like for those of us that, and I'm sure some of us have been here before, like we go to bed with when, and as soon as our head hits the pillow, like a million thoughts just flood our minds and we get stressed out and we fall asleep. And sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night and we still like a little bit stressed out and anxious. And then when we wake up the next morning, we still feel the same. So it's amazing just how the things that we do right before bed have such a big impact on our sleep and then how we wake up the next morning, which very often sets the tone for the rest of the day. You get what I mean? Like if you can do this gratitude thing right before you go to sleep, Whew. Like my friend, you will be having a great sleep and good chance of having a really good day the next day. So just things, certain things to kind of think about. And by the way, if you ever felt behind in life, you can check out this video over here. And if you have a friend who's struggling in life or you think, 
could really benefit from this video, share it with them. Other than that, my friend, I will see you in the next one.